Sleepless with Steve on FM 89. It is time for a brief movie review. Joe Visa did not see the film, but I will be talking about it nonetheless. Had to make time for this one. The Killing of a Sacred Deer. Oh, if a film title could be poetry. I love that title. Uh, it is directed by Yorgos Lanthimos. Believe I'm saying correctly. Just pretend I am if I'm not. Uh, this is his latest movie. Most people would know him as the director of the film The Lobster, which came captivated a lot of people last year. It was a big movie last year on the indie circuit. A lot of people liked it. I didn't see it in theaters. I did see it uh, on DVD. Wasn't the biggest fan of it, but admittedly, I need to go back to see that movie. I really do. I need to go back and rewatch it. Uh, no about Lanthimos, knowing what I know about his style and everything like that, I think that it would be important for me to go back and watch that again, you know, especially after how much I liked The Killing of a Sacred Deer. What a twisted work of psychological horror this movie is. And I'm going to use a word I don't use often. It is very Kubrickian in the way that it is conducted. If there were ever a movie that really solidifies um, Yorgos Lanthimos' style as Aiken to Kubrick, I think it's this one. And this is a very interesting, intriguingly made movie. Uh, first off, if you don't know about Lanthimos' style, if you don't know about like what he likes to do with movies, uh, he's a very eclectic director. He's a Greek auteur, if you will. Now, the thing about his movies is it has like they, they have like a matter of fact quality to them. They consist of kind of a cold, despondent aura that manifests an icy hybrid of like realized emotion and unfeeling direct logic. And that's really kind of an amalgamation that not many people could pull off. But does it really well. All the dialogue in them in his movies are is very stilted. It's delivered in a very cold, almost clinical, awkward, memorized way. Uh, they, they, the, his movies basically do everything they possibly can to disconnect you, but they're so brilliant in the way that they do it. Like you have a feeling that during the middle of scenes, Lanthimos stopped the film and said, "No, we gotta be, we gotta be colder. We gotta be less." Emo we got to be less emotional. He said, yeah, I'm with this movie, Colin Farrell returns again as a cardiologist who makes the acquaintance of a young boy. It's actually Barry Keegan from Dunkirk in the movie. Um, he makes the acquaintance of Barry Keegan, the son of a patient who, of his who died on the operating table. Uh, the two aren't really friends. They kind of just kind of harbor this really strange sense of connection like mo most of Lanthimos' films. But the two carry out this sort of acquaintance as uh, the kid starts to involve himself in the cardiologist's life. He gets close to his wife, played by Nicole Kidman, and their two young kids uh, as well. And eventually, um, the eventually what what goes on is the son is the cardiologist Colin Farrell's son in the film winds up becoming very sick, and he starts to have a growing numbness and a paralysis in his legs. That is when Barry Keegan's character uh, Barry Keegan's character issues a warning uh, to the kid, saying that uh, or issues a warning to the family that now he has to make a decision involving the future of his family and how this illness might affect all of them as time goes on. Uh, this is a very creepy movie. This is a very unsettling movie. Uh, where the lobster had occasional shots of humor sort of undercutting its own um, its own kind of dark subtext, The Killing of a Sacred Deer is not like that at all. There's a couple moments of ironic humor, but it's very it's very dark. And then it also has a lot of steady cam shots, which is why I compare it to Kubrick in a way. It has a lot of steady cam shots, has a lot of experimental shots where uh, Lanthimos' camera either zooms forward uh, to shrink a long shot into a bust or a close-up shot. It's very intensely crafted. It loans itself to being a very singularly clinical experience. There's a lot of scenes in a hospital that is kind of portrayed to be this large, hulking, cathedral-like building. It's very strange. It's very unique. And the dialogue, too, I said before, is the delivery is deadpan. It's so monotone that it, it, there's actually a moment that reminded me a lot of Wes Anderson's The Grand Budapest Hotel. And it's a moment when Barry Keegan in the film, he's talking to uh, Colin Farrell. And all of a sudden, he's talking in a very cold, despondent, kind of lispy manner. Then he starts talking like this. He starts talking really quickly. He starts talking like a normal person and talks about illustrating his motives. But then he goes back and starts talking very slowly. And the reason that the Grand Budapest Hotel it reminded me of that movie is that there's a scene in the Grand Budapest Hotel where, like, 
the 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 outside of the hotel is showing it in a high angle camera position, as opposed to Wes Anderson who shoots everything straight on. The subject of the sh- of the shot is always at the center, and it's a very symmetrical shot. At both moments in the film, in in the killing of a sacred deer in the Grand Budapest Hotel, both movies felt a little bit off balance to me. There's a there's a there's a commonality and a consistency that's sort of uh, thrown away for a first moment in the film, and it really shows you how how hyper stylized these films are because they really commit to showing you. Uh, this technique or committing to their techniques that when they abandon them, even if for a brief time, they become very different and they almost feel like they've, you know, they've, they've broken in a way. And that's what I find so intriguing about this movie. It was co-written, uh, Lanthimos was co it was co-written by uh, Ephemis Filippo, who is also his uh, main co-writer on The Lobster as well. Uh, there's some great detached performances here too. Colin Farrell's kind of become the go-to man for Lanthimos, uh, and Farrell's the one who really has... Uh, changed his acting ways a lot. He takes a lot more, takes a lot smaller projects, takes a lot more experimental projects. Another great actress in this movie because she plays such similar beats to another Kubrick film, Eyes Wide Shut, is Nicole Kidman. She looks uh, very, very similar with her hair and her body language and her matriarchal role as she did in that film. It's no wonder that Lantham was cast her in this movie. Uh, it's not a perfect movie, Killing of a Sacred Deer. I do think that Lanthimos' style better suits short films or medium-length movies of about, like, maybe 50 minutes. Feature movies like this movie's in a nearly two hours it's a little bit long okay and when you have a style that like tries everything it possibly can to disconnect you and distance you it gets alienating it winds up being a little bit too much it winds up being a little bit too despondent and you get enough of it in a way some people might not have that problem i'm the kind of person who hungers for characters and connection in the movies that i watch but at the same time i see something like this that's so well made and that's so interesting and so compelling too in a strange way i really did like it uh the the last thing to kind of note is the title which like most late the most movies you can kind of think about as your own what does this all mean you know what i mean what does this all you know come down to what does this movie boil down to and it's it, it's sort of amusing a little bit too a sort of a parable on a on greek on greek myths uh and whatnot so there's actually a story of uh a Phigenia, uh who's the daughter of of a of a Greek king who was sacrificed after killing quote unquote a sacred deer. So there's a lot of ties to like old ancient Greek text, uh, which I bet you many other people can explain better than me. So I'm not even going to try. But thematically, this movie it's very similar to a story about tough choices that come with parenthood. Uh, in addition to being a very slow burn tale of revenge. So it, it's a film that you will strive to get, but though paradoxically it has an elusive aura and a detached ambiance that prevents it from being quote unquote got i give the killing of a sacred deer three out of four stars i liked it a lot uh i don't think it's a perfect movie by any means but i definitely recommend it it's going to come to dvd shortly next year i believe in february it's coming out uh check it out it's in theaters right now for those that hunger and crave and desire and complain that we do not get enough original movies now's your chance to see and support something very unique uh and very different i was in a theater of about maybe 10 people that saw it so it's cool that this movie's making the rounds it's in about over 200 theaters this week so i think it might get a little bit more of an expansion to about 300 or so I really hope it does get seen though because it's another movie again if you if you're always lamenting the fact that hollywood's not making a your chance to see a very interesting movie the killing of a sacred deer yorgos lanthimos director of the lobster's new film three out of four stars